Hey, what's up everyone? Danny Lightning back with another CSR2 video. Please like, subscribe, and hit the little bell that reminds me every time I make a new video. And this video is by request. Actually, several people have been asking about what are your favorite live racing cars? Can you make a video of like every car in your garage that you own that you like and what you like them for and stuff like that? So that's what I'm going to do. I know this is pretty similar to what most people were asking for. So my first garage here, everything except for the 250 GTO. I've never really been a huge fan of Legends cars, but the rest of the cars in this garage are very nice cars that I use for like daily racing where I have to like change parts around. So you might have like your restriction trial that says, hey, you can't have a you can't have an upgraded transmission on this car. So these are the cars I use for that. All right, we got the F12 Berlinetta. This car beats the crap out of everything as long as it's not live racing. This is an amazing car for everything but live racing. All right, this thing beats Dino by a huge amount. For some reason, though, when you go into a live racing lobby, it puts it in the long, wrong lobby with cars that are way faster than it. I've never understood that, but unfortunately, that's what happens. But I use this for all kinds of stuff. Very, very nice car. All right, next we have the Mustang GT Premium. When I first started off, this was one of the first cars I got, and I used this thing all the time. This was a very, very nice car. I'm pretty sure I even finished the first set of Tempest races using this car, if I remember correctly. I use it for all the little daily battles and stuff. Not daily battles, but all the little daily races that use a Tier, tier 3 car. This is usually my go-to car for those. Most of these are just set up on a stock tune. I don't even really tune most of these. They, they stay on a stock tune, and then I change the parts around as needed for the different races. Volkswagen Golf GTI. Great live racing car. This will beat Tempest 1 and Tempest 2 bosses, no problem. Tempest 3 bosses, it would actually, actually would beat them, except for once you get to Tempest 3, they give you a Mazda Miata, and they make you do that for Tempest 3 Tier 1. All right, so there's that garage. Let me pause this, and we'll go into the next garage. Actually, no, I forgot to do a couple. The, the BMW M325i, this is just great for average daily racing. I actually don't know if this is good for live racing or not, but I use it for the daily stuff. Very nice little car. Then I got the Jaguar F-Type R all-wheel drive coupe. Not really good for much except for the daily stuff, in my opinion. Just the daily stuff where I need to change stuff around. It always beats dyno time on the stock tune, no matter how I put the part. So it's great for the little daily daily racing events all over the map. All right, now we're going to move to the next garage. All right, so I think this garage and the next two or three garages are my live racing cars. So we've got the Copo Camaro. This car was not very good at live racing until I maxed it out. Now it does extremely well. So if you can max out a Copo Camaro, awesome live racing cars. I, it beats Dino by a pretty nice amount. It did not do that until I maxed it out, but pretty nice little car. The Sesto Elemento, crazy fast, crazy fast car. Goes like 400 and some miles per hour. It's not maxed out. Very fast once you max it. But this thing blows people away in live racing. This is an excellent live racing car if you can get it. It's a little hard to learn how to drive, but still, it's an awesome car. Mustang HPE 750. Alright, this car rocks. Mine's at the sweet spot right now. I think 12.0 on the dyno. It almost can't lose a live race until I have won too many and it pushes me into the faster lobbies. Same thing with this guy. Guy is also around a 12.0. Cannot lose a live race unless you've been pushed into the faster lobbies. And then at that point, you have to reset your car. I made a video all about that somewhere. You know, you can look it up on my page. You want to figure out how to reset your cars after they've won too many live races. The RX-7 Easter Bunny. Another amazing live racing car. Beats everything. Same thing with this guy, LB Aventador. All these cars in this garage, except for maybe the Copo, beat the crap out of everything. I think the main reason my Copo does good is because it's so fast running 7.2s. But everything else in here is nowhere near as fast as that, but they just, they just live race like champs. 
All right, let's move on to the next garage. Okay, so here we have the Sylvia S15 Rocket Bunny. This car wins the majority of the live races I take it into. It doesn't win them all, so it's not one of the better live racing cars, but it's a very good live racing car. Thing is, this one never seems to get pushed into another lobby. I don't care how many I win, it always stays in the same lobby. It doesn't get pushed into lobbies where it can't win anymore, and that's why I really like this one. It might be my tune, it might be the parts I have installed. I'm not sure what's causing that, but... It just works out good for me at this point. This guy, I never really drive this, but I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, this was a great live racing car. I just remember this thing winning live races like crazy back when I first got it, but I didn't like the way it drove or something, so I, I haven't driven this in well over a year, probably. Still a very, very nice car. Alright, this is, this is an exception. I don't live race with this, but at Milia's LBM4, this is good for all kinds of different things. Once you beat the boss and get this, you can use it to beat the rest of the Tempest bosses. This is a great little car right here. Great little car. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be good for live racing, but I've never actually used it for live racing. So I don't know personally, I've just heard it was a good live racing car, but... This is great for beating bosses and daily races and stuff like that. The LBNSX, if you can drive this guy right, is an excellent live racing car. Runs nice and fast, beats Dino by a nice amount. Very good car for pretty much anything in the game. Alright, next we're going to move over to this. Finn's Exige 360 Cup. I've never done anything with this except for live race. This car is great at live racing. All right, this is one of those boss cars that you're going to win eventually from the Tempest races. Three purple stars, extremely high amount of uh, Evo points for a tier two car. So this thing actually gets really good respect points for winning live races. And it wins live races, no problem. Very good live racing car. You get this one, definitely upgraded. The Porsche Boxster S, even at tier five, tier five. Stage 5 parts only, this car is a beast. Right now, I've got a 1,300 on the Evo points. I don't have any Stage 6 installed on this. I do have this car completely maxed out, but right now we're using this car to swap in my crew with Stage 5 only. And this car is great. I used this thing to, I used this for live racing when I first started. I got this car. I mean, I live raced the crap out of this thing for a really, really long time. And this was my major RP earning car for the first probably like six or seven months that I was playing this game. Until I started getting some like really nice tier four cars or whatever. Maybe six, seven months. I don't know, but it felt like I drove this thing for a long time. And it did earn me a lot of extra RP. Very gr nice live racing car. Good for beating the Tempest races. Um, great car overall. All right, let me go ahead and move to the next garage. All right, now we're on to the next garage. So we've got the Golf GTI Rocket Bunny. This is the Tier 2 version of the GTI. This was a really, really good live racing car from what I remember. The Evo points are really high. It's got three stars. Just a really nice all-around car for everything I used it for. I haven't driven it in a long time, but I did really, really like it. The Civic Type R, this is in this garage. I actually don't really remember much about this car. I'm not sure why this ended up in this garage. I don't live race with it, and I don't really use it for anything. Very nice car, though. I, I think it's a really, really good live racing car, because I'll tell you what. I have had one of these things kick my butt many times in live racing when I was in there with a Tier 2 car. So I'm pretty sure this is actually one of the better live racing cars for Tier 2. I've just, I just don't have that many parts into it or whatever, so mine's not that great yet. But definitely a good live racing car. I'm just surprised I put it in this garage because I've never really used it. Anyways, Nick's Focus Trackster. This is another one of those boss cars you're going to win eventually. This is probably the fastest Tier 1 car in the game. It dominates live racing in Tier 1. You can't beat this car. It runs way faster, way faster than any other tier one car in the game. All right, so if you see one of these in live racing and you're not, you're running a tier one car or a tier two car or something, 
Don't live race this. It'll probably kill you. All right. Super, super fast car. KJ's Toyota 86 Rocket Bunny. I like this one because it looks amazing and it's pretty decent at live racing. I don't really drive this anymore, but this is one of the most beautiful cars in the game, in my opinion. I don't know. I just love the way it looks and it is a decent live racer. Not, not a great car overall, but I just really like it and it's decent. Here we have a GTI with one star, which is even better than the other GTI I was showing you a minute ago without the stars. Same thing. Awesome live racing car. Awesome for pretty much everything in the game. You, you can't beat the GTIs for tier one. One star or no star, they're both awesome. This guy right here, another awesome car for pretty much everything. Great at live racing. Great at like daily stuff. Great little tier one car. This is another boss car. I think this is from Tempest. I don't know if you get this from Tempest 2 or Tempest 3 or whatever, but this is one of those cars you're going to have a chance to win eventually once you get to a certain point in the game. If you're newer in the game, these boss cars are not going to be available to you. All right, let's move on to the next garage. Okay, so now we got the Porsche 911 RWB. I was actually kind of disappointed with this car at first, but eventually I kept getting more and more and more parts for it. And now this car is maxed out, and it seems to be a really good car that beats Dino, does great at live racing, works good for daily stuff. But before it was maxed out, I just remember being disappointed in it. 488 piece to Spider. I don't like this car. It, it's very hard to win live racing with. And this was one of those mistakes where I spent like 40,000 bronze keys that I saved for months to max this out and ended up hating the car, basically. This guy right here sucks at live racing. It's not, it's actually not that great of a car, but it, it's just very cool to have this in my collection. 600 LT, don't really like it. Not great, not a great car. It's an okay car. I don't know. I just never liked it that much. The Hurricane, all right? The Huracan with three stars. This is a great car. It's not very good at live racing unless you can down tune it, but this car will really do a lot for anything else. This is great for the Tempest races. This is great for daily stuff. This is the car that I used to beat Tempest 3. So I beat the very last bo boss on Tempest 3 and got that Harkness Sesto Elemento using this car. And this car made it easy. As long as you can get enough parts in this car, this will blow away all the, all the Tempest races, no problem. This car, I don't really know. I guess this is really good at live racing, but I used this one for a Prestige Cup and I've never really touched it since. So I don't really have too much to say on this car because I haven't really used it much. Anyways, let's move to the next garage. So I'm skipping over the garages of cars that I don't actually use or don't like. But Donna's F50, I've never upgraded mine. I just hear this is a great live racing car. I guess this thing is really, really, really good at live racing. The RX-7 Rocket Bunny, with the right tune on this car, this thing does great for live racing. Great live racing car with the right tune on it. I don't really remember this car too much. I know I've driven it for a few things, mainly an event. I don't really have much to say about this one. The regular NSX, great live racing car. Honda parts, that's the unfortunate thing about Honda, is the parts are kind of hard to get. The game doesn't give out a lot of Honda stuff, unfortunately. But if you can get parts for the NSX or the LB NSX, these both do great in live racing. All right, let's move on to the next garage of cars that I like. Okay, so this garage has one car in it that I think is good. The 2015 Nissan GTR R35 Premium. You can buy this one in the dealership. I've won the version with one stars. Very good for live racing. Very good starter tier 4 car. I, I got, that was my first tier 4 car that I bought. And I used it for all kinds of stuff. And I loved it. A little hard to drive. The shift pattern's a little quick. But if you can get used to the shift pattern on that car, it's pretty awesome overall. It does good at very, very many things. 
All right, in this garage, I've got the BMW M4 Coupe. I've never really driven my M4, but I know people say this is the best car to get in Tier 3 for someone who's starting out. I, I think I used my Mustang or something, but I guess the M4 is one of the better Tier 3 cars for you to start off. I guess it'll beat a lot of stuff. Very, very good car for my understanding. If you're new, you might want to check out the M4. All right. Um, you can buy that one in the dealership, I believe. So anyways, let's see. The Subaru BRZ Rocket Bunny up here. I'm pretty sure I really liked this car, but I can't remember for what. This is one of the first cars I got that I was like, oh, this is so cool. I think this was a Prestige Cup car or something. And I don't really remember using it too much, but I do remember liking it a lot when I did use it. I just can't remember if it was for live racing or daily races or what, but I thought this was a really, really cool car when I first got it. I, I really wish I could remember what I liked about it, but I haven't driven this thing in forever because I have much, I don't really drive tier one, tier two, or tier three cars for anything except for little events all over the map that require those. Most of the time, I'm only driving my tier four and tier five car. All right, next garage, let's find some more cars that I like to tell you about. All right, the Ford Focus RS. I don't have this one upgraded. I actually stripped one of mine, but from what I remember is this car was pretty much as good as the GTI. I think this and the GTI are both excellent. Wait, wait, not the GTI. I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of something different. This is a tier two car. I really, I had one of these upgraded and maxed out, but I hated the color and I stripped it when I got another one and I've never bothered to upgrade it since, but I just remember I really liked the Focus RS, but I can't really remember for what. I think it was the Fiesta that's almost as good as the GTI. I'm going to have to look that up again, but this is a very nice little car from what I remember. If you get one of these, definitely worth upgrading it. I can't really remember if it was good for live or good for little like daily events or what, but very nice little car. Summer C4. I've never upgraded mine, but I've heard a lot of people say that this thing dominates in live racing. This is another one of those boss cars that you're not going to win till later in the game. So this won't be available to new people. You got to beat one of the Tempest bosses in order to get this. So anyways, I don't know from personal experience, but I've heard quite a few people say that this car just dominates in live racing. I really should upgrade mine one of these days. I don't know if I have any stage six parts for it or not, but I guess this is a really, really nice little tier two car. All right, so here we got Condewitz Golf GTI Mark One. This really isn't that great of a car. It's pretty much equivalent to the regular gti the only thing is it's got three purple stars and it's got a little more evo points so it should earn more respect points during a race but it actually runs about the same time as the regular gti it's really not any better than the regular gti it just it drives a little different and it earns a little more respect points and it looks different all right I've got a non-boss version of this as well in red, and I think the non-boss version of this car is actually a little bit faster, except for it's only the non-boss version has gold stars instead of purple, so the purple stars are always going to earn a little extra respect points. But anyways, let's see if there's anything else. Hey, this one's kind of cool, the Abrath 500. This doesn't look like much, does it? But you know what? I'm pretty sure this runs right around a 12.0. This car is a lot better than it looks. I remember actually taking this into live racing and doing really well with it. Dino Time is a 12.431, and I'm pretty sure it runs like a 12. I'm pretty sure it runs faster than a 12.4. I kind of think it runs around a 12.0. I could be totally wrong, but... I remember it doing really well in live racing and being a lot faster than dino, I think. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure this is a good dino beating car. It actually looks kind of neat as well. I mean, I don't know. The colors I got on this one, I named it Ghosty. For some reason, it reminds me of like a Pac-Man ghost or something. But anyways, let's see. There's that Fiesta ST, all right? I think this is the one that's supposed to be really, really good. 
I've never actually upgraded one of these myself. I just know a lot of people were saying these are really fast. I think this is the one that's supposed to be comparable to the GTI, but don't quote me on that because I've never upgraded one myself. I would have to I would actually have to look it up. Let me find out really quickly. Yeah, it says if you get the version of this car with the one star on it, it should run like 11.8 something. Which is pretty much equivalent with the GTIs running 11.8 or 11.9. So, this is actually a really, really good little tier 1 car. This and the GTI are probably going to be really, really awesome. And you know what? I think this is a dyno beater too. Let's find out. This thing will have a dyno of 12.3 but has a capability of running 11.8. So yeah, this should be a great little live racing car. I've never actually seen anyone take these into live racing, but this car should do the trick. Um, let's see if there's anything else. That might be the last car that I want to talk about. Alright, the Mini Cooper S. There's some sort of really weird tune you can do on this, where I think you remove certain parts, and you tune it just the right way, and I think this thing will run a 12.0. It's got a really weird shift pattern. I actually hate the way it drives, but I think I had it set up like this. Um, let me see. There, there is one part you set to stock, I think. Yeah, you put you put this to a stock engine and you tune it just right, and this thing runs like a 12.0. And it did really, really well in live racing with that tune. It was just a really weird shift pattern. I actually can't remember how to do it. I haven't driven it in forever. But, uh, let's see what the dyno is on this thing. Dyno is a 12.6, and I'm pretty sure it ran a 12.0. Maybe a 12.2. I don't know. 12 something. But it was great in live racing. If you, if you can get this set up on it. Alright, if you got one maxed out, you use that tune, set it to a stock engine, and you use the funky shift pattern, which I, I really don't remember what it was. That thing will uh, destroy people in live racing until it gets pushed into a faster lobby. There's that Mazda Miata they give you eventually. Once you hit Tempest 3, they give you this car for free. And then you have to... Uh, the, the worst part is having to put all the parts in it. Because Mazda parts aren't really rare, but they're not that easy to come by either. So this car needs to be almost completely maxed out in order to beat Tempest 3. There's that other Golf GTI I was talking about. I think this one's actually faster than the Boss version, but it's only got two two gold stars instead of three purple stars. I don't know, that's kind of weird, but that is how it is. Um, I think that's pretty much it. So those are the cars that I own, that I use. You know, I kind of give you a heads up on what's good for live racing, what's, what's good for daily stuff. But anyways... Quite a few people were, were requesting videos similar to this. So I figured, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and make this video and get this thing out of the way. Unfortunately, these videos end up being pretty long because there's a lot of cars to go through. Um, I don't know if everybody's really interested in watching these long videos. I know some people are, but that's pretty much the deal. I've got a total of 33 garages. Most of these cars, they're just sitting there collecting dust. For example, like, let's go check out my Tier 4 cars. I mean, you, you can see, like, most of these are have, are have not even been upgraded at all. Why? Because I can't afford to upgrade every car. I have a lot of game cash, but when it takes, like, 4 to 6 million game cash to upgrade a car, if you just upgrade everything you get, you're going to be constantly be broke and struggling to get cash to upgrade new stuff when you do need to upgrade something, but... Most of these cars just sit here and they collect dust. Here's my tier 5 collection. Most of these aren't even upgraded. But most of these I really don't even know if they're that great or not. I probably got some gems sitting in here, but I just can't afford to upgrade everything. Plus a lot of them I don't really have that many parts for or whatnot, so they wouldn't be up worth upgrading even if I uh even if I did, you know, have all the cash in the world. So anyways, that pretty much wraps this video up. Hope you guys enjoy this one, and I'll catch you guys later. See ya.